The Wild Rebels is a 1967 crime drama that took advantage of the biker trend that was just starting to explode in American theaters. The film was also a stepping stone for a seminal film studio of the drive-in era. Shot in 15 days and directed by William Grafea, Wild Rebels stars Steve Alemo, Willie Pastrano, Bobby Byers, and John Vela. Somewhere in Florida, Rod Tillman is a stock car racer whose career has hit the skids, but his talent is being scouted by a biker gang known as Satan's Angels. The gang's graduating from chasing kicks to robbing banks, and they want Steve to be their wheelman. Steve finally agrees once he coordinates his plans with the cops. Will Steve's cover get blown, or will he stop the gang before their quest for kicks goes too far? Motorcycle culture started capturing the American imagination in the 1950s, representing freedom to some, chaos to others. Biker pictures really caught on when AIP, Roger Corman's stomping grounds, released The Wild Angels in 1966. The film was a box office hit, and that caught the attention of director William Grafea. Grafea was shopping around a screenplay set in the world of stock car racing, but the success of Wild Angels convinced him to turn the bad guys in his script into bikers. For the lead, the Wild Rebels had Steve Alamo, a post-Elvis-era teen idol who became the host of Where the Action Is, a 1965 TV music showcase. The Wild Rebels would be his feature film debut, and he even got two musical performances in the film. So does this make The Wild Rebels a pop star movie? It starts that way. But Steve's character is really the guide, the blank slate hero. Once the bikers step to the front, the movie belongs to them. But the bad guys are supposed to be the interesting ones anyway. And the truth is, these guys are classic B-movie gangsters. The erudite mastermind, the silent trigger man, the brutish muscle, the boss's mall. These hoods are old school mobsters dressed up in leather jackets, co-opted swastikas, and a bit of hip talk. The violence doesn't get grisly, but it lingers on screen a little longer than TV would at the time. The film has some beatdowns, a knife fight, somebody gets punted upside the head around minute 48, and there's plenty of gunfire in the final act. Not a lot of skin in this film. This movie's got plenty of racetrack footage. Only two minutes of motorcycle footage, though. And yet, The Wild Rebels was exactly the kind of biker movie Crown International Pictures was looking for. Crown and AIP used to have a symbiotic relationship when they both started. AIP couldn't reach all of America's theater screens on their own, so they went to sub-distributors like Crown. Crown would get those films in every town in 13 states. Everybody got paid. By the time AIP made The Wild Angels, AIP had enough money to do it themselves, so they canceled their contracts. Crown decided that if AIP was going to cut into Crown's business, Crown was going to cut into theirs. If AIP could release a hit biker movie, Crown could too. The Wild Rebels was a hit with the drive-ins, performing exactly as the producers had hoped. Grafea and Crown would collaborate again. Steve Alamo would also return to the big screen once or twice, but by this point, he was beginning to find more fulfillment behind the scenes of his first love, music. He began to find chart success, producing for other acts, even starting a record label. In 1970, he merged his record label with another to form TK Records, just in time for the disco craze. TK Records would release hit songs by Betty Wright, George McRae, and KC and the Sunshine Band. Trivia fact, TK Records' final release was the debut single for Weird Al Yankovic. Bobby Byers played Linda, the girl in it for the kicks. Byers found more fulfillment in theater and voice work, particularly in the audiobook industry and 60s TV fans might recognize her as the dubbed voice of Johnny Sacco from the Sci-Fi Kids show. The silent biker Fats was played by Jeff Gillen. His most memorable role would be as the Santa Claus that Ralphie got to talk to in A Christmas Story. Altogether, The Wild Rebels is a typical drive-in movie. Enough ingredients for a good poster, but not quite enough movie to stand on its own. It's a casserole of three or four different kinds of stories that almost gels together. It has plenty of the flaws and foibles that movie hecklers go for, just like the creators of Mystery Science Theater 3000 did. 
Well, nothing like a moonlit afternoon. Or you can treat it like the sampler that it is to drift in and out of while you chill however you choose to chill. Banjo! <gasps> 